Hi, I'm Steve Govercourt and welcome to another of my time-lapse porography videos, this time a kingfisher. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, as usual, I started straight off with the eye. As I said before in my other videos, I think um, it's good to start with the eye. And it gives me a feel for the, uh, the rest of the burning thing as well. And get the eye right and um, I tend to be a bit more confident after that. Now I'm just trying the, the very small feathers around the, the eye, spending a bit of time here around the eye, eye area itself. What I'm using here are just very tiny strokes, very fine strokes with the tip of the spear shader that I'm using. And um, now there's a tiny, just a very, just touching with the tip of the spear shader to get these tiny little feathers underneath the beak. And uh, now there's some slightly longer finer feathers underneath the beak. Now I'm walking round to the top the top of the beak to the fore, what I would call a forehead area, I suppose. I'm literally just touching the surface with the tip to um, form tiny little lines that give the impression of the feathers that you have on top of the, uh, the kingfisher. I'm using um, about a medium heat, I would say, on my controller. And I tend to work down the lower end of the range with regard to heat. I'd rather burn too light and build up the depth rather than go in too dark. Again, lots of small, tiny strokes here just to build up these small feathers across your forehead. And then add a, starting to add a little bit of shading in here and there, um, which again is just a. I've gone over the same area again with smaller strokes. Rather than actually using the shading side of the tip, I'd rather go back and forth to build up the depth. I do tend to flit around all over the place when I'm doing my uh, my burnings. Um, I might spend quite a bit of time one area and then suddenly jump to a different part of the reference altogether. And then I'll go back again. Indeed, I'll end up going back over the whole burning towards the end just to make sure all the tones are right in the various places. Here I'm going back and forth over the same area to get that dark area under the beak. As we all know you can't actually get black when you're burning but we can get a very very dark brown. If you go back and forth over the same area enough or raise your heat enough. I do sometimes tend to raise the heat if a very dark area is required because um, I find that once you've burnt an area, you do tend to need a bit more heat to go with that same area again. Now these feathers, at well, the moment, they're just like long strokes, like you would um, do here really, the ones down his back. And just again, the very small, very fine strokes, which I can do, you're just using the very, very tip of the spear shader, which I keep sharp. You can see me now just tend to do the eight lines of the feathers and then I'll go back and do the inside of the feathers and there'll always be a darker shading towards the bottom of the feather which is uh, really the overcast from the feathers above. As long as you get that in place it tends to show you the depth and give you a bit more depth and makes it look a bit more real. But it's just, um, just like doing here really, you can just get a quick view here of me doing very small strokes then fill in the main body of the feather. I do tend to do the edges of the feather first rather than do the outline of the feather because that simply won't look right. There we go, you can just see me doing these uh, little tiny feathers all around his chest. There are some longer feathers coming up before long which is a slightly different approach for. But get the idea here, just going back and forth over the same area with a low heat will build up um, the depth of colour. It took me a while to actually get the process right for doing feathers and I just um, kept thinking of long thin strokes or short thin strokes depending on the length of the feather. And that acts as the shading as well by going back over with some more small strokes. I'm going back to the front again now, back to slightly longer feathers here. He's actually sitting on a 
branch which we will do towards the end as well that's covered in sort of moss and grass I use a slightly different technique for that as I'll explain when we get there now here I'm doing a bit of shading here by using the edge of the spare shader just to draw it back and forth to give me that bit of shadow underneath where he's sitting now again some more fine strokes these finer feathers the feathers are getting a little bit larger now so you can get a bit more detail in there now with the individual hairs of the feather and as we work down towards the tail feathers again a bit more detail just just with the end of the, uh, the spare shade of the very tip um, most people um, ask about what tip should I use for this and what tip should I use for that I only ever use this one tip tip it right up on edge to give me the sharp point or that on its side to give me the edge of the shader for a thin line if I need to or I can lay it flat on the base for a nice area for sh shading I can use the um, flat base to draw back and forth very lightly to give me the shading over a larger area but I do tend to use the tip more than anything as I'm doing now even when I'm going back and forth over areas to give me the, the darker shading and here we are again just finishing off the bottom of the wing at the back I will have to go back and put a bit more shadow in towards the end because there's a, there's a light source from the left and up to the well sort of um, about nine, ten o'clock time I would say shining down on the bird so we get a shadow cast not on only on the branch he's sitting on but some of his feathers cast a bit of a shadow as well and they're starting to darken up the area that's got a little bit of shadow and going around the edge of some of the feathers that also cast a shadow as you can see now but I'm not actually using the tip shading part of the tip I'm just again I'm just using the tip and going back and forth over the same area I think it gives a truer picture than if you actually use the edge to shade now here I'm using a, the edge of a scalpel to just scrape away some of the burn to show the highlight in the eye very common process that you used in pornography now I've started on the branch underneath and um, what I tend to do here is just use well the best way to explain is like a scribbly movement with the end of the tip a figure of eight scribble type movement um, and you you tend to then I'll leave little gaps where I think it needs to look like a bit of a branch or a twig and it's just a random scribbly type movement which you're trying to give some form to by adding darker areas in here and there unfortunately the lighting is not very good in my studio here at the moment so I'm trying to sort that out so hopefully in a, another time we'll have a bit more light on the subject but it's purely just a scribbling movement I'll do a separate video at some point showing this particular technique because it can be quite effective it certainly gives the right um, effect anyway this is a little um, leaf part of a plant that's obviously growing on the branch she's sitting on at the moment I'm just trying to uh, get some sort of form into the leaf I'll probably go in again either with the scalpel or the end as I'm using here the end of a fibre pen just to scrape away some of the burn give me a bit of a highlight again I'm in with a scalpel and then back to burning again just finish off a bit more of the plant in the corner it's quite deceiving time lapse. Um, it does look quite quick, doesn't it? But it, uh, it really does take a lot of time and patience. A lot of th I haven't got it some sometimes. <laughs> right, here we go, just finishing off the top of the branch. And now I'm adding the deeper shadows in now. And I've, I have raised the temperature up quite a bit here to deliberately give me some darker areas quickly. Gives, that gives a bit more form to the branch as well and now some of the ed edges of the feathers need a bit more darkening but you can see he's really taken a nice form now surprising difference it makes just adding a bit of shadow here and there and now I'm using the fibre pen again just to 
scrape away and the scalp will scrape away some areas give me a little bit more highlight here and there and now we're coming to the final step which is just burning in the border I have to actually change the tip now I'm just using a little ball tip to go back and forth around the corner around the front bottom around each edge purely and simply just going back and forth and you can see how hot I have it the tip is actually glowing I don't normally have that. Well, I hope you um, hope you enjoyed this one as well. Thank you for watching.